Shogun Episode 9, The Long-Awaited Crimson Sky has recently been released. Let me tell you, I have never felt this conflicted about a TV character before. And yes, I'm talking about Yabushige. I mean, looking at his actions, his constant betrayals, I should be hating him, right? But I still don't. What's wrong with me? He sucks so bad, but in an endearing way. Does that make sense? I think here I should give credit to the actor's portrayal of Yabushige. I don't know how he manages to make him that likable. But anyway, now that we're over with my confusion over Yabushige, we need to talk about episode 9. I don't think I've felt this amount of tension since I watched Succession's final episode. It doesn't even make any sense! I'M THE eldest BOY! <laughs> and I already knew what was going to happen to Mariko. This should tell you a lot about the greatness of this TV show. They're doing an amazing job. Praises aside, let's do a breakdown of the penultimate episode of Shogun where Mariko experienced the death of her dreams and died as a martyr. Torinaga's plan Even though we haven't seen the guy in the entire episode, seeing his plan fully in motion was enough to remind us of his genius. So, he sent Mariko to Osaka castle with a perfect plan. Tornaga knew that the Christian lords would not easily let a Christian woman, a noble Christian woman, die, or at least die before causing problems among the council members. Mariko's mission was to show every captive in the castle that they were being kept prisoners there, which would make Ishido look like he was the one who ignited the war, not Torunaga. In the meeting with Ishido and Uchiba, Mariko revealed that she was ordered by Torunaga to take Lady Kiri and Shizu back to their hometown. Of course, Ishida was quick to insist such a thing would not be permitted since Torunaga himself is awaited in the castle. Mariko said she and Torunaga would be back on the day they promised they would and there's no reason for Ishida to not let them go unless everyone in the castle is forced to stay there. It was an incredible gamble, bigger than what Yabushige tried to pull off by using John. At that point, it would have been dishonorable for Ishido to admit that everyone in his castle is being held hostage against their will. But he also knew that if he admits no one is hostage, then everyone would want to leave. It was a catch-22 and only someone who roots for death as much as Mariko does would be able to rise against it. Overall, it was really clever on Toronaga's part to use Mariko. She was the best one for the job, both because of her samurai background and her current Christian belief no one else would work. The next steps. For me, the best sequence of the episode was Mariko and her guards trying to leave the castle as Ishido's men tried to stop them and the others watched them looking down. Not only the actor showcased a great performance, but the choreography was also phenomenal. Seeing Mariko pick up a Naginata herself and try to get through the man at the gates was perfect. And when she couldn't, it meant that she couldn't do her sworn duty to Toranaga, which was a great shame, even though she was prevented by other people. Not fulfilling one's duty to one's vassal would be a big dishonor and Mariko used that to announce that she would be committing seppuku by sunset. We all know one part of Mariko was relieved as she announced that. She has been wanting this for almost two decades. We saw it at the beginning of the episode too, running away in the midst of a storm even though she seemed pregnant. She has this romanticized ideal of death in her mind despite suicide being a sin in her faith. Saying flowers are only flowers because they fall is such a depressive way to look at life and only shows us Mariko's gloomy mindset. <laughs> She didn't even care about her son, for example, not when she was pregnant and not when her son said he was ashamed of her. But still, I felt like she was hesitating to commit the seppuku. She was scared. It's only normal for her to be scared, but I believe she found it harder than what she thought it would be like. I don't think it was because she didn't want to die. I think it was because she knew she was committing an enormous sin as a Christian. Thank God Ishido stopped her before it was too late. The Final Betrayal Ishido seemed like he was letting Mariko and the others go away from the castle, but he couldn't possibly allow that since he would have no leverage left. That's why he decided to do another deal with Yabushige to kill everyone who was supposed to leave. As a late stage promise to Ishido in exchange for immunity, Yabushige led masked assassins slipped into the castle, killing people in their sleep. 
There, we finally saw John's great talents in combat. They all ended up in the warehouse, having thought that the doors would be heavy enough to stop the attackers, but Mariko quickly realized that the assassins were setting up fuses to blow up the door to reach everyone inside. Knowing her death now would achieve what Toronaga wanted in the first place, Mariko sacrificed herself in front of the blowing door and died as a martyr. It was a win-win for her, to be honest. She got to die, but not as a sinful person who committed suicide, but as a hero who saved others. She also died knowing she was serving her lord in her final moments. It was the most ideal death she could ask for. Consequences What will Mariko's death mean for Ishido and Toranaga? First of all, it will definitely make the Christian lords like Hiyama and Ono very angry. And they might turn against Ishido or even support Toranaga once he arrives at the castle. Ishido's reputation will take a huge blow indeed. And most importantly, the other hostages will be enraged by what happened after realizing that they might actually be killed if they wanted to leave. Overall, Toranaga's plan, in my opinion, was to enrage the other hostages, especially the Christian lords, hoping that they would turn against Ishido and Uchiba. And I think Mariko's death will work and do exactly that. How do you think the final moments of episode 9 will affect the next stage of the battle between Toranaga and Ishido? By the way, Mariko's death in real life was both alike to and different than what happened in the show. Go watch this video if you're interested in a real story. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you soon.